Good morning. Today is June 1st. Goodness gracious. Okay. <clears throat> so built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 6. Nehemiah was a leader whose passion for Jerusalem drove him to leave the security of his life in Persia to oversee the rebuilding of a protective wall around the city. Although he faced many difficulties, the job was finished in record time. Leadership requires courage and determination. It demands vision and tenacity. It means we are willing to roll up our sleeves and get to work. Opportunities to prove our dedication occur most often in quiet, private places. Staying with something or someone over the long haul, maintaining the vision and keeping the commitment year after year is the sun is the surest manifestation of the cur of a courageous heart taking on the daily task of life with hope and faith, with kindness and respect is an indication of our desire to follow the Lord. May we influence others by setting an example of courage and hard work. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Okay, so today is Judges chapter 6. And the first verse, Israel does evil in the sight of the Lord, Again, oh, just this constant thing. But anyways, in this chapter, what happens is um, they did evil. And so they were sold. The Lord sold them to the Midianites for eight years. And it says that they went into the hills and they dug caves and just, they just hid in there or something. And then... The Midianites destroyed like all their crops and their fields and their cattle and things like that. And so they were left impoverished. And then they cried unto the Lord and he raised up a prophet to them. And the prophet was like, guys, for reals, again. Um, and then some sort of, I think something happened in between there and then he tore down the altar of Baal and cut down the grove of trees next to it and then built an altar to the Lord and made sacrifice. And when the people saw it, they uh, asked his father to send him out so they could kill him. And the wording is so off that I can't, I'm not quite sure if the father says, let the son pray for himself to be saved or let Baal Pray for himself to be saved. It was a bit confusing. But then um, Gideon is his name. He puts a fleece on the ground and he says, Lord, if you're going to save us, if you're going to save the children of Israel by my hand, then put dew on the fleece and not on the ground. And that happened. And then he said, okay, Lord, don't be angry with me, but I just want to make sure. Now, if you're going to save us, put dew on on the ground and the fleece be dry and the Lord did that so that's basically what happens in this chapter honestly I'm not quite sure what it all means or what it's talking about but we're going with it okay so Gideon meaning warrior was one of the leading figures represented in the book of Judges covering the turbulent period of time commencing with the death of Joshua and ex uh, of around 17, 1477 BC and extending through the birth of Samuel around 1125 BC. The leadership of Gideon began around 1260, 1263 BC when he was called to deliver Israel from bondage under the Midianites. Gideon obeyed the command of the Lord to destroy the altar of Baal and the associated ceremonial grove thus earning the alternative name Jerubal, Jerubal, meaning he that uh, striveth against Baal. He then prevailed over the forces of the Midianites by applying an abundance of strategic know-how to compensate for the smallness of his own army. 
Though triumphant, Gideon refused the kingship. Um, his son, Abimelech, was born around 1223 BC, <laughs> as Judges 9 relates, when Abimelech aspired to and obtained the office of king following the death of his father. He murdered his paternal brethren, numbering three score and ten, to preserve his power and office. Abimelech ruled with treachery and cunning, generally many enemies in the process. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Generating many enemies in the process. On one occasion, in bringing destruction to one of his the towns in his realm he was slain gideon is remembered fondly as an exemplar of the victorious champion of right it's got a point of interest here the hebrew word that we translate as judge shafet is a, pr a particle of the Hebrew verb shafat. In the Hebrew Bible, shafat is used to describe roles that include a giver of the law, a judge, or a governor. These people would be responsible for making decisions in controversial, controversial situations, executing judgment, dis uh, discriminating, condemning, punishing, and vindicating. There are only two instances in the book of Judges where the word is used in its legal sense. First, when the Israelites come to Deborah for judgment. And second, when Jephthah warns the king of the Amorites. These words. Okay. If I spoke Hebrew, maybe I could pronounce some of them. But I can't. Okay. Um... No, I don't want to talk about that. And no, I don't want to talk about that. All right. So that's basically it for chapter six. And tomorrow is seven and eight. So. Today is June. Let's see. What do we got today? Poem for the month. Help Good Shepherd by Ruth Pitter. Turn not aside, shepherd, to see how bright the constellations are, hanging in heaven or on the tree, the sky-born or terrestrial star. Brood not upon the water's fleet, willows o'er thy crown, destined thorn. Full of her rubies, as is meet, or whitening in the eye of morn. Pause not beside shepherd's delight, the pipe and tabor in the veil. And mirthful watchfires of a night, and herdsmen's rest in wattled, wattled pale. Forsake though deeply earned and still, sound with thy crook the darkling flood. Still range the sides of shelvy hill, and call about in underwood. For on the hill are many strayed, some held their thickets plunge and cried and the deep waters make us afraid come then and help us or we die I don't think I got that one but what are you gonna do okay love you all see you tomorrow